listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. Today, I have here with me my dear friend, Michelle Schneider. Hi, everyone. And we have gone way back. I was actually, I was driving here today thinking about it's been 15 years yeah. since we've been friends. And a lot of what we talk about, you don't even know I'm going to say this, but a lot of what we talk about on the show is relationships. And I believe that every relationship is meant to be. And we take the good things from our relationships and then we you know, learn from them. And what I realized is that the ex-boyfriend that I was with at the time when I met you, and that's how I met you, you know, there were some things I took from the relationship, wasn't the best one, he was not the right guy for me, but yet, we were at a party, like a schmoozy mm -hmm. thing for the psychologist that I was working for, mm -hmm. and she had introduced me to like a neuropsychologist to maybe do some work together or something like that. At that same time, the ex-boyfriend <laughs> friended you and right after that, he was like, Jamie, I want you to meet Michelle. You guys should be friends. And so that's how we became friends. Yeah. So it's a good thing that came from a relationship that was not perfect. Yeah, that's true. I remember meeting you so long ago, and we lived in so many different places, but we remained friends. And we, you know, you, it's hard to say that for a lot of people, you know, because know. you go through life and you come and go, but we really made an effort to see each other and have dinner at our favorite place, Xi'an. Xi'an. <laughs> Xi'an. Xi'an, Chinese food, amazing. Yeah, by definitely. The way. But it's wonderful. Great bonding place. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's one of those friendships that we had that was, it's just so unique, you know? I feel like we have such a unique friendship. We do, know? yeah, we're For from so different many, places. Yeah, so many years and just And now, like at that time, you were a piano teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was just at the beginning of my career mm -hmm. and now let's hear what Michelle does yeah well I'm I'm in your field in in the in the sense where healthy relationships is part of what I do so I'm a mindfulness and integrative nutrition coach and I work with women and moms so moms if you're out there and you can probably relate um, on how to slow down uh, stress less um, lose weight and feel great really in their mind and their body and in all aspects of their lives. And I, um, what I do is I really integrate mindfulness in the sense of you know really telling my clients to when we slow down and look at things, we become more awake in life and we start to notice what really is our, in our own way, right? What are the behaviors, the mindset, the, um, the, uh, ideas that we have that um, are really preventing us from achieving what we really want to achieve. So um, I love that. I love to give people the, the the keys to the car in the sense of saying, you know, um, you really have control over your life, over your health. Um, you don't have to just be in the automatic. You can be in the driver's seat and create really whatever you want to create. Um, and as we know, this is a really sick country. Um, you know, we're, we've got a lot of dis-ease around us from stress and um, health issues and food, and we have a lot of work to do. So um, it's really my pleasure to help people in all aspects of their life to get healthy. And one of the things that I, I wanted to say, because I think this really relates to relationships, is what I find um, when I work with clients is that we're really missing something that's so fundamental and what we're missing is um that that we you know fundamental in the sense that you know w when we deal with life's challenges we really need these things and for some reason we've kind of skipped over it and the things we really need are things like you know love and kindness and compassion and trust and acceptance for you know we need to give that to ourselves and I think just in relationships and I'm sure when you meet a lot of people in your practice um, a lot of people are looking outside just like in health you know tell me what to do or mm -hmm. you know but really it starts within right yeah I was actually just um, talking to 
a client and she was saying, you know, this is this is the situation. I have this guy, he keeps cheating on me, like, are we gonna work? And I said, you know, I I, I need to know so much more, first of all, and I can't tell you if it's gonna work or not, but all I know is perhaps there's something inside of you that was attracting that like maybe you're not being honest with yourself yeah. and so maybe that's why you attracted that relationship definitely definitely it's definitely something to look at you know when we're bringing something into our lives to look at what is it that we're putting out there you know or what is what is it that we are searching for you know like when we uh, eat food you know sometimes it's emotional it's like we're trying to um, fill a void fill a void same thing or you know are we going into bad relationships as well because we're trying to fill a void or something like that so um, I know you had a, yeah. an awesome topic we were talking yesterday and mm-hmm. I said you know if you could think of anything that you feel like would be interesting to talk about and this is an amazing topic so feel free to bring up the topic oh and yeah well I've just you know I'm thinking about you know being in a relationship and going through uh, romantic relationships through life. And I, you know, I, I say like every Jewish person can relate to this. Um, I don't know if it, it, it goes through culturally, you know, to other people, but if it does, definitely. I le- think it does. It does, okay. Um, well, I just remember being younger and being single and of age where you can actually date. And, you know, getting the pressure from parents and loved ones as to, you know, okay, so, you know, now you're single, when are you going to have a boyfriend? And then when you have the boyfriend, it's like, okay, now when are you getting married? And then when you get married, it's like, okay, now when are you having children? Yeah. And, you know, finally, (laughs) you have the children. And then all of a sudden, you wake up and you have all of that, and you're like, why did I rush? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I really find nowadays we have that, not only in our families, but now it's even more sort of societal. impact. Yeah, it's societal because we have social media mm-hmm. that's feel, making us have that FOMO, the fear of missing out, you know, the pressure of like, oh, if I'm not doing it, I'm not fitting in. Um, so it's not only family influence and pressure, but there's the, you know, the, the, world. the world pressuring us. And I hate that, and I really want to speak to that and say that that's not healthy. And yeah, because then, well, I always tell my clients that you basically don't compare, first of all, and everybody has their own life journey. And the more that you focus on just being present in your own life, the more that the authentic relationship for you is going to come to you. Definitely. If you focus on lack, you know, uh, have a lack mentality, then that's what you're gonna see, you know? But if you focus on all the great things that you have in life and know that your path will unfold and and set the intention for, you know, what it is that you want in your life and- And then put it out there and say, I don't care when it happens, I want it to happen at the right time and I know that I'm taken care of, you know, I know that as long as I'm being present and in my joy and peace, yeah, that it's, going to happen definitely and when we take care of ourselves and we take care of ourselves and we give ourselves the love and compassion and the kindness you know our light shines very bright and we start to attract attract what we're actually looking for oh my god the stories that I've heard that are so beautiful when people just make that shift you know and then they say well then this started happening and this and then they just become alive again yeah and they are attracting not only you know their lover their husband their wife their whatever but Everything gets better. Right. Yeah. Their jobs, their health, family relationships, everything. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I think it's just important to like, you know, cherish every moment, you know, take one step at a time. I feel like in this environment right now, everything is so quick. Everything is about, you know, if you didn't do it already, you missed it. <laughs> it was like jump on the boat. Yeah, it's just it's it's moving very fast, especially with technology and everything. And we have to remind ourselves that it's okay. You know, this is where we are, and um, it's a beautiful place to be. And if it's hard, you know, life is up and down, and there are very very hard moments in life as well. Um, and just knowing that this, you know, this is this is it is this is what it is at this time it's not going to be forever so that's 
and that's acceptance mm-hmm. and that's a huge mm-hmm. concept that I teach my clients I live by just when we accept you know instead of fighting yeah. yes we just accept what is yeah. we accept in our relationships you know certain things that are um, I always tell my clients it's that if you are trying to change the person that you're with that's not a good sign right you know right. if you're judging and they're judging you it's just it's not in the flow it's not um, it's just not authentic right right and you know we can't really change other people we can't we can't people try to we until can't. they learn they can't and you know the one thing we could do is we can change the way we approach people we yeah. can change ourselves in but that's about it you know yeah and like I know with myself I wouldn't I am really happy with who I am I don't I don't want to change and so I why would I want to change somebody else and I don't want anybody to feel like they want to change right. me and if they do feel like that then it's not the right right it's not the right relationship yeah it's not like yeah vibing right and that's a good point to say like you don't like if it's not vibing if you're trying to what did they say like put the uh, pot on like the, yeah if you're trying to put like the lid a, on the pot and it's, and not, it's not fitting, fitting. <laughs> yeah exactly like Cinderella shoe exactly if it doesn't fit then you know it's just not right it's just not right and I think that trust is it comes back to that thing that I teach my my clients as well as like you know we you know we live in our bodies we're most we're, we know us better than anybody mm-hmm. So um, we have to learn to listen and we have to learn to trust, you know. So if we just take some time and listen and and deep down inside, we know, you know, we know the answer. And if the answer is this isn't, you know, it isn't right, just honor that. That is my favorite topic, literally. It's it's your integrity. It's checking in with yourself. It's it's just, yeah, it's a knowing. It's It's a a knowing. knowing. And even as a child, if you look back on any mistake that you made, because they say that the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed until you're 25, and that's what's responsible for making the right or wrong decision. Mm. But even looking back before our prefrontal cortex was developed, and it doesn't even really come from learning, it comes from the universe, wherever our intuition or knowing. Um, Even look back at sixth grade, you still knew what was right yeah. to do, but you still might have gone with what felt good at the time or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 something that we are so disconnected to right now, as, again, because of what's happening in the world, because of the technology, because we are being distracted. We are being distracted from ourselves. So um, in order to, you know, we have, again, we have to just trust that we know if it doesn't feel right, it's not right. If we need to rest, if we need space, then honor that, you know. So I, I love that you know your clients are, are bringing that up to you, and that you there are you know people like you out there that are promoting that because that's really important. And there are people like you out there Aww. that are promoting it as well. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. I just want to say um, I know Rachel's. We haven't. We have a guest who's going to be calling in. Rachel Russo. A relationship coach from New York so we're just looking at um, just looking over here to see if she's calling but I just wanted to say that um, in that in those moments of peace she's in and quiet that is where we get our answers yes if we just see if we can answer just find the time to be quiet right (laughs) find the time to be quiet and Rachel are you there hi Jamie I'm here welcome (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. How's it going? It's going well. We're having a fantastic conversation. So happy you're joining us. Oh, thank you. I've been excited. It's a little late here on the East Coast. So if anyone usually listens to my interviews, I'm probably a lot more peppy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll try. I'm, I'm, I've turned into a morning person, former night owl. So, <laughs> uh, But I'm excited to have this talk. Oh, Hi, great. Rachel. It's Michelle. Nice to meet you. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you as well. At some point, you guys will need to meet in person. You need to come to, to L.A. area, California. Oh, anywhere. I'm sure I will. I, I do like to visit the Southern California weather. You can't get any better than that. Very true. Very true. Uh, Although so we may be experiencing some rain tonight. Rain? <laughs> How are we going to survive? Oh, my God. Uh. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's good. We need a little rain. Yeah, we do. Um, so would you like to tell 
our viewers um, just a little bit about what you do and who you are. Um, and if there are, and do you also, so Rachel is a matchmaker plus other things, do you also help people around the country or just on the East Coast? So we all wanna know all of this. Sure, so I guess the beauty of modern day technology is that I can help people anywhere with um, FaceTime or Skype and email and all the technologies that we have for doing video calls and just working virtually. So I do do coaching with people everywhere. And I, I focus my matchmaking business on the New York City area. I've been a matchmaker and a dating coach full time, 14 years, my whole adult career. I like to say that. And um, it's just been an incredible journey. So most of the people I match up are people that live in New York City or New York City suburbs in New Jersey, Long Island. However, I also have been very lucky to have a position with a school. There's actually a school called the Matchmaking Institute in New York City, and they train entrepreneurs how to be matchmakers. And I've developed curriculum for them, an online training course, and I also speak at live events internationally and throughout the U.S. So through that, through my, my teaching and my work and networking there, I know matchmakers all over the world, everywhere, even like South Africa. <laughs> Wouldn't believe it. So I can actually work with matchmaking clients anywhere because I have this network of other matchmakers who do recruiting and send me referrals and can meet people in person. So we collaborate. So, you know, if you're listening and you're, you're interested and you're outside of my usual service areas, there might still be possibilities. I can't promise everyone, but I definitely could try. Okay. On that note, I literally have a client for you. Just to let you know, <laughs> we can talk about it later. But um, oh, there's a new okay. client. Um, she's in Chicago, and I'm not going to get too into it, but she really also, besides for relationship therapy, coaching, she really would like a solid matchmaking company because she said that the one that she was using was just really not quality. Um, she's like, I don't know, she's in her 30s and, and the only guys she was getting were like older, you know, 50s, 60s, nothing wrong with that, but just they are not a good match. So um, I'm excited I will tell her about you. Okay, so go on. Yeah, well, I'm happy to talk to her and I'm not one of those matchmakers that pushes an agenda on people. Unfortunately, some of the companies get a bad name. If someone comes yeah. to me and says, okay, I only want to date five to 10 years within my age range, and I think I can match them within that, I'll tell them. I won't say, oh, you have to date 20 years older. Well, <laughs> They've got to be realistic, and I think it's important to do the matches with integrity because yeah. it's really, it's an investment of people's time and money, and you know, I try to only work with people that I can truly help, and that would be rewarding to work with, too, for me. Yeah, and you're honoring their needs instead of just being like, oh, you're a guy and you're a girl. Right. Right. So. <laughs> Nobody loves, you know. Exactly. I, People I, can go online for that if that's all they want, right? And like, there's nothing wrong with online either. Maybe you guys were talking about that or we could talk about that. But I think there's many different ways to to find love today. And we're talking about this whole topic of manifesting love. So I don't think we should rule any of them out if we're truly open to it. Absolutely. I mean, so many people have had success online. I met my husband on Match. You did not. Oh, yay. I did not. Awesome. I, did, I did the old fashioned way <laughs> at a party <laughs> before, before uh, technology. I think we had pagers. Maybe? No, I think we started the cell phones. Yeah, he actually had to call yeah. me on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's good. That's yeah. pure. Yeah, and sweet. yeah, it was very sweet. I love it. Yeah. But I was going to say also, and I know we need to get to your, your other things that you're going to talk about, but I just remember being single and the people that would fix me up. Yeah. With the people that the people, I would be like, do like, do you really think we'd be a match? Like, how in the world? <laughs> bless everybody's souls, you know. Like, but bless his soul. But it's so clear but that I, we're just not know, good for each other. Gonna say that it's just because, because you're a girl. Yes. You're, you're in the same age range. So like, let's fix them up. And good intentions, of course. Definitely. But people don't take enough time. I think it's like like you said, good intentions. But I don't think you know. Like, thanks for having me. Now I have to sit for two hours. Yeah, we don't really think about what it is you need and all of that. So, absolutely. Okay, so, Rach, take it away. That's so true. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Did you ask me a question? I said, take it away. You had some things <laughs> take, it take it away. Okay. So, um, obviously, I was talking about a little of what I do, what my career has focused on. And I think, like, one of the most important questions people ask me, like, how can I find the right person for me? How can I find something sustainable? Because it's really easy to get dates now. We're talking about all of these apps and the swipe culture. But how do we actually turn it into a relationship? So I think that's an interesting question to explore, and I try to work on that with my coaching clients. And I think you'll both like some of my ideas. So if you want, I can share a couple of them, my ideas to kind of make real lasting love happen, to manifest it. And this could be whether you're, you're totally single and there's no one right now in sight, or maybe you're kind of dating someone, or maybe you're even in a relationship, but you're just you're feeling lonely in your relationship and you're not thinking that it's like the real genuine love that you know it could be. So how do you manifest more love? I think that's the question. Okay, so yeah, we'd love to hear your tips. Okay, so my tips, I have them written down. I have actually, um, so if people want to go to my website later, I have kind of a complimentary report that I would send out and a lot of these tips are in there. Uh, but I'll give you my cliff notes. <laughs> Um, and one don't forget to I, don't forget to tell everybody what your website is. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so um, number one tip I think is self care, and I'm sure Jamie, just kind of from knowing a little bit about you and your background, I'm sure you would agree. Like this has to be a priority because everyone always talks about self love, and for some people it sounds too woo woo. <laughs> Um, but I think to really, truly have a healthy, happy relationship, it has to start with you being healthy and happy. <laughs> um, and a lot of people don't have that fight figured out. Like, what does that mean to really, like, honor yourself, respect yourself? I think it's everything. It's, it's your whole lifestyle, taking care of your health, getting your money and your finances in order, being in um, a career that you're actually passionate about. If you're not in a career that you're passionate about, you're working toward getting passionate about it or you have a hobby or something else, um, trying the best that you could to have healthy relationships with family and friends. I think all of that is so important to be like a whole individual before you try to merge with someone else. Yeah, and I actually, I'm writing a book and I talk about that so often. I, I remind my readers that, you know, it's instead of that whole like, oh, you fulfill me thing, but it's really a true forever relationship happens when two mm -hmm. whole people come, come together. together. Yes, and we were actually just talking about um, self-care before you even called in as well because as a, a health coach, that's just fundamental for me as well. Yeah, you're you know, really, of course. you know, starting mm -hmm. with taking care, not, you know, looking elsewhere, but really looking within, you know, really doing the work within, you know. Um, spending time, making time for yourself. Um, you know, so many people I hear say like, I don't have time to eat a healthy meal or I don't have time. And it's like, well, you're the most important person yes. in your life. Of course you Invest need to. Invest in yourself. Right. It's like, you know, you need to change that mindset of you are the most important. <laughs> it's all about It's it you. Is. You have all the time in the world to take care of you. Our jobs in this world is us, yes. right? So invest in, in yeah. us. And we're, mm -hmm. we're really, really missing that. I remember, unfortunately, my mom was in the hospital last year, um, actually a couple of years of, of um, with cancer. And I, I remember I was Aww. running out the uh, running out of the house, and I didn't um, eat anything. And I said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute. My mom's not going anywhere. You know, she's in the hospital. She's not going anywhere. I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to make myself a, a beautiful breakfast, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to, you know." enjoy myself and nourish myself so that I can be the best me yeah, and show up and, and, and be there for her, not ragged and stressed, but give her my light and my love. And that's, you know, that's the, the way we, we need to sort of switch our, our, our mindset to, to really be more of a, an, a, a love first here, you know, fill up the, uh, put the mask on ourselves you know we can't really pour from an empty cup all that good stuff mm -hmm. so yes we're we're with you on totally oh good I'm glad you agree I won't get into that too much more but I will say one more thing uh, for me anyway having a morning routine and a night routine are like key where I take care of things for myself early on first priority like exercising having breakfast as you're saying 
I do meditation, you know, things like that so that I don't start the day in this like frenzy (laughs) Uh, because, you know, the text messages and emails will start coming in. And if you're just, I find that if I'm in the mentality where I'm just responding to everything instead of being proactive about how I shape my day, it's just like a disaster. And I feel so stressed. So that's kind of like my secret for self-care. I think like if anyone, um, is looking for a way to transform their their every day. It starts with like little habits like that. Yeah, and that's also about how you get grounded and yep. present to like to be ready for the day. Definitely. My dad always said breakfast is the most important part of the day. Yeah, I do want to say it, um, also for yeah. relationships. You know, for my husband and I, it is necessary for us to say, "Babe, you go and do your thing." He's in a men's group tonight. You know, he's doing his men's mm-hmm. thing. I go to Monday night, I do hip hop. My girls are like, mommy, don't leave and we miss you. And daddy goes, you know, um, don't you want mom to be happy and come back, you know, Love fulfilled? Yeah. And and I just say, mama's got to dance, you know? And I know that I'm showing my kids that this is the right way to live. You know, we need to, to do that. That is awesome. Yeah. I have to tell you, that was one of the things on my list that I wanted to bring up. It's simple. It's don't make finding or keeping love your only focus in life. Meaning just as you do, people have to have an independent life outside yes. of their significant yes. other. Otherwise, they're going to be in a boring yeah. relationship. They have nothing to bring to the table. The conversation is dull. Um, it's really important. You have to be a whole person, as I said, and to have those separate interests are key. Yeah, you've got to let each other grow and give them the space for that. Also, I think it really helps in relationships when both parties are on the same page because it. so many mm-hmm. clients come to me where one is so needy and they just need to be with the person all the time, and then the other one's like, I just need my space. My space is when I you know, feel better, I grow, I learn. So I can come back to you mm-hmm. as my my peaceful, you know, full hearted here I am. And it, it sometimes the other person doesn't understand and that's when there's a problem. Because it's it's so much better when both parties are on the same even if they don't understand, I don't understand why you need more space, just at least validate it right. and honor it. And that's and right. So true. Uh, what else? Okay, gratitude. I think that that is huge. There are scientific studies out there. There are studies, um, you may have heard of John Gottman. Um, he has done tremendous work in the field of couples therapy. And I think that his research shows that if you cultivate a mindset of gratitude in a relationship, you are going to just kind of set off a chain reaction and it's going to lead to more positive interaction with your partner. So it's such a negative kind of uh, place to be in when all you do is see the bad in your partner. I mean, even something simple like, oh, they left their socks on the floor. The stereotypical (laughs) complaint that a lot of women do have about men. Um, You know, if if you get in that mindset where you let that get you down and you're nagging your guy, and it's just so destructive to a relationship. Um, so when you're in the relationship, you have to express gratitude like on a daily basis, compliment your partner, say what you appreciate. And when you're single and it's looking kind of bleak, <laughs> um, and I know especially this time of year, I have clients telling me now, oh, it's another New Year's Eve, I'm going to be alone. Um, yeah, that's, that's not where you want to be, but try to focus on the good things that are going on. Maybe you did have a date. Maybe there's promising opportunity coming up to meet new people you really have to be in a positive kind of energy to attract positive things in your life in general and it goes for relationships as well absolutely and I just want to go back to the talking about the couples and the socks on the floor Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. these couples come in and they're going they're so angry about the socks or the he eats with his mouth open or she eats waffles in bed like I do Um, (laughs) or whatever it is but there's, there, it, there's always stuff behind that. It's mm-hmm. not really about the sex. What does that mean to you? Do you feel mm-hmm. like your husband's like not taking care of you because he's disrespecting you in some way? It's not that you're truly angry about the sex. Right, right. Well, or we, the sex. We were talking right. about this earlier. It's like the, you know, plugging into the lack, you know, focusing on like all the things they didn't do versus all the things that they do do. And there probably are a lot of things that they do do. Yeah, you know, and, and we doing forget, the best they can. and we forget because we get used to it. You know, we just expect it. 
you know we're so you know just in in general you know I do a lot of mindfulness so we often take for granted that we have legs and we can walk and we're breathing and it's just like that you know we often take for granted each other and and what we bring to each other's lives because life gets so busy and then like we go on social media and we say this person's doing this and flying around the world and doing these you know and uh, it's 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 just about like we talked about earlier um, it's just slowing down and appreciating you know I did have a, a beautiful moment today as I was driving from San Diego to LA and I was telling my husband the other day when I was just in the car for like five hours never even turned on the radio just totally thinking about <laughs> all the things that I need to be doing and today I was doing that thinking about all the things I need to be doing preparing for the radio show etc all the other projects I'm doing logistics and it just it came over me. I don't know if it was a song I got inspired by because I eventually did turn the songs on because I had like turned the mind off. Yeah. And it came to me. I was like, rewind, remind. Yeah. I'm living in California. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> living here, and I had wanted to live here. This is amazing. Yeah. I lived here before, and I never knew if I was going to live here again. And I'm here, and I just had such a beautiful moment of I'm, I'm here, and I'm just yeah. being grateful. Yeah. I have to say though, I've been, I've been with my husband for 20 years. That's amazing. Um, we we met 20 years ago, and we've been married 15 years. And there are days when I forget to tell him how grateful I am. And he's an amazing husband, and he's he's very. I mean, he cooks and he cleans and he, you know, he's wow. He works this sounds great. He's a, he's I'm sure a lot of ladies listening yeah, are thinking that. Yes, <laughs> he's an amazing, amazing man. Yeah. And and even like that, I often forget to tell him how amazing he is. And I have girlfriends that say to me, you know, did you tell him that today? You know, and I don't, and I do, and it's 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 the work. Um, in relationships that we have to remember that any good relationship if you want to have a good relationship you must put work into it just like the same work that we have to put into ourselves you as know? long as we're I couldn't of agree with that more I think that okay love is a verb and it's a choice and we don't just say okay I fell in love with him or her and that's it like I think we have to choose repeatedly to keep loving that person and showing them day after day again and again that you know we care about them and make them feel loved in the way that they want to be loved that book of course such a bestseller the five love languages could tell us more about how to do that but you have to really the essence of that is really understanding who your partner is and what they need to be feeling loved like maybe somebody's husband needs to actually hear it and wants the compliments Somebody else would like the uh, the love language, the act of service, where you're doing something for him. You're making him dinner. The main, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Like right. maybe that's true for yeah. some guys. You have to really know your partner and choose to love them in the way that they want to be loved yeah, and repeatedly. Not, and not be afraid to step out. I know for me, you know, stepping out a little bit outside my comfort zone, you know, because I know he would want, you know, me to blah 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 blah. I mean, you know, for well, example. People do some, certain people do like that the touch and yes. the, especially guys yes. do want more of that physical intimacy. So we need to honor mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Getting back to you and these this twenty year relationship, yeah. Michelle Schneider. <laughs> what would you say <laughs> is for all of our listeners, our watchers out there, viewers, what would you say is the key to a lasting forever relationship? I mean, I would, all of this, everything that we're saying, you know, really is honoring each other, listening to each other, um, you know, making sure that we're giving each other space to grow and supporting each other, Um, you know, and, and, and like we said, like, you know, I... Uh, I know that he likes things very clean and neat. He's a very neat freak, you know, and I'm not. So I have to be super conscious. My um, husband and I are the same yeah. exact so I, I, opposite. Yeah, I, I try to be conscious because I know what makes him happy, you know, and that's the key is like doing things for the other person because you know it makes them happy. Absolutely. You know? Like I used to go to Cubs games with Brian and I don't necessarily love them or sit with him during golf. Yeah, right. But I mean, also, I think, you know, communication is key, you know, um, and that's that's really important and, and coming together and, you know, not going to bed angry. My husband's motto is happy wife, happy life. I mean, I think that's Amazing a good motto. one. <laughs> Um, yeah, that certainly I, helps. I mean, <laughs> we, we definitely have, you know, we've been lucky, but we've also done the work. 
and um, I think that's 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 what you got to do. But this is why I find my work so fascinating because there are couples that go through challenges that don't come out of it because they're not supposed to, you know. Mm. And so when there's a a you guys, you know, and you've had challenging situations and you're still there because you're supposed to still be there. Right. Yeah, he was the boy next door. I mean, we he have, literally was. Yeah, he literally was the boy next door when I was like five years old, and we went to high school together, and, we, and we never met. It was one of those things like I did. I didn't meet him. I have so many uh, moments where we were like passing ships in the night, you know. And uh, I met him years later when I was ready to meet him. And I want to say that that's a really important thing because I had to. I always say like you have to go through. I don't know if you can swear on this, uh, but you have go to go for it. You have to. I think <laughs> I did last. You time. did okay. You have to go through the shit to find the gold. You know, you have to know what you're looking for. The frogs. To yeah, find the exactly. Same thing. Like so, when I met him, I knew okay, this is not what I wanted. This is I. I, I saw the what you didn't want. Yeah, exactly, and I saw the beauty in him. Um, and you know, you kind of have to go through that. I was also 22. <laughs> I was young. Um, but I was grateful that I went through all of that to know uh, what I wanted. So. Someday we're going to have Daniel on the show also. Yeah, I would love it. <laughs> yeah, so, and Rachel, Rachel, from a male, male perspective. Rachel, we have <laughs> some questions from viewers, but I, I also want to make sure that we get through anything else that you wanted to say. Yeah, I just had one other thing to say. I think we kind of covered so many ideas. They're simple principles, but that's really what is necessary to make a lasting relationship. One other thing I would add before we get into the questions. People are scared to be vulnerable, but it is so attractive. Yes. I used to not be good at this, <laughs> um, but having been a marriage and family therapy, I did grad school, I did clinical you know, training. I'm not practicing as a therapist, but I, I parlayed it into a relationship coaching career with singles, with couples, matchmaking. I learned to be more like that for my professional career and also my own romantic relationships. And I think when I was able to step into that vulnerability, all of the boyfriends that I had were like so impressed by it because it's so, so rare. Everyone is just afraid to be their true self these days, yeah. especially in the dating scene. I wish everyone could have had like <laughs> the 20 year relationship that started when they were young with the boy next door. But the reality is, is that it's not happening like yeah. that. And people are getting ghosted and they're just going through such rejection. And so they, they're showing up as like, a fake, I'll call it a fake representative <laughs> of themselves, of who they really are. Like this person that goes on dates and makes small talk about their, their family or, you know, where they, they go for fun or what they do for work. And they don't really get to like the core of who they are. They're just afraid to show their true colors, whether it's the early stages of dating or even like a few months in, they're just, they don't want to let their guard down. Um, and my message to them is to do it, be authentic, like cry. <laughs> um, I think that people like it and they resonate with that because it's like the truth. It's your yeah. true self and it's so rare. And I believe that being your true self like that is the only way that you're really going to find the right person for you for the long term. Because we've all, myself included, been in those relationships where it's like fantasy perfect for like the first three months or the first six months. And then the walls come down and people get comfortable and they're like totally different. So I think you should just, yes, follow some dating rules so you don't come across crazy. I'm not saying to cry on the first date or the second date or anything. Um, but for the most part, like be yourself. Don't be afraid that you have to do everything perfectly or, or hide who you are because the truth is going to come out anyway. I, I just had a client the other day who was saying, you know, I'm not showing up really as me. So I know, and she's aware of it, I know I'm playing this game, but then she says, but, but this guy that I really like, he's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, no, like this, it's just, it's not going to happen. One of you has to change, yeah. you're the one that's doing the work, so can you just challenge yourself to just get out of the comfort zone, take a leap, and let him know how you feel, yeah. you know? And because I believe it's already planned out anyway. So I, and this is what I said to her. Mm -hmm. I said, he's either going to be your boyfriend and maybe husband at some point or not. So whether you tell him how you feel or not, it doesn't Nothing, matter. Right. It doesn't matter because he lose. either likes you or he doesn't. Right. But the practice 
<laughs> of taking that chance to be vulnerable is going to strengthen her so that she can now do it the next time if he's not the right yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I love, I love, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love what you said, Rachel, also just being, you know, people relate to the truth. People relate to mm -hmm. that heart centered connection between us as humans, you know, and I think that's where true connection that's happens. That's where true, true connection happens. Absolutely. And I think just like what we talked about is starting with yourself you know, it becomes easier to, um, you know, be true and show up in your life. So, um, yep. I, I love it. Exactly. I, I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think you're right on. Um, and it's, it's, um, cool. it's unfortunate that, uh, in this world that we live in, the truth is hard to come by. So we have to, we have to show everybody what tr the it truth is. looks like, you know, the more of us people appreciate it so much more like even on these dating apps like if you don't want to see someone again just tell them yeah. <laughs> it's nothing personal you know they're basically right. a stranger yeah. at that point sometimes you didn't even meet and you're yeah. you're just deleting them or ghosting them and you know I think people would just love to hear the truth and not necessarily even take it personally if they're mature enough and they don't have so much of an ego they'll just realize like okay that person thought I wasn't for them but guess what there's tons of other people that I am for and now I can reframe this and I can be that much closer to finding the right person for me and I didn't just waste my time. Like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank there's you a, for the truth. There's a commercial that I adore. It's a couple on a date. And it's, have you guys seen it? I don't know what it's for, like a bank or something. And it's them thinking, like, they planted, the guy planted a friend calling him to be like, I have to go. I'm not really enjoying it, you know. But it's... Oh, God. But it's like being... <laughs> honest you know like yeah. hi we're sitting here I'm not really into this date but um I'll sit here for another 15 minutes right. and then I'll go if only I mean that's a little harsh but if only relationships were like that yeah I always say like you know when you do the love you know the love work within yourself then it's easy to come from love with other people because we would really like if you find compassion within yourself then you have compassion for other people you know and so you will find a way to speak your truth from love, you know, by saying it in a way that is just perfect. And then there's nothing, you just put it out there in the world and then you know that you just did the right thing and then it's theirs to, to, to hold on to in whatever way. But, um, you know, just come from love. You don't have to say, this isn't working out for me, you know, in, in a rude way. <laughs> just speaking yep. from, from the truth, from the heart. And, and uh, then you did nothing wrong. And you can use the words, I'm just honoring. Right my integrity I'm honoring how I feel and you know we're both incredible people and mm -hmm. the right people are out there for us um, and I'm just honoring myself yeah yeah these are great tips definitely and I love uh, all of them perfect awesome so I'm great thinking well, I hope they're of value to people listening I'm sure they will be I'm sure they are mm -hmm. um, so but let we have a few more minutes why don't we wrap up with some information. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I just wanted to say that if anybody has questions that you don't feel comfortable with calling in, asking on the air, feel free to email me at jamie at the relationship expert.com. I spell my name a little differently. It's like j'aime in French. <laughs> it means I love you. Or I love, or it's like Jaime, a <laughs> Spanish name. J A I M E at the relationship expert.com the way that's spelled that's my email address um and if you are interested in calling in ever through the live show the number is 818-570-5085 you can find me on instagram at the relationship expert but no ex it's the relationship x part i noticed that i like that there <laughs> And now my guest and co-host would like to share there. Yeah, how you can so find them. My uh, website is Vital Path Wellness, and you can find me at Michelle at VitalPathWellness.com. And uh, I believe that's all. The, oh, and also Instagram as well, Vital Path Wellness. We keep it just consistent. And my website, I forgot to mention, yeah. is TheRelationshipExpert.com, but spelled out E X. The relationship E X. Okay, and take it away, Rachel. 
Okay, so I'm going to make it simple. I do have a couple different websites, but they all link back to my main one, and it's just rachelrusso.com. Easy. Um, it's spelled R-A-C-H-E-L-R-U-S-S-O.com, and there are links on there to, or icons, whatever, to my Facebook, my Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, <laughs> Google+. Uh, you don't social do social media, media at all, imagine. do you? <laughs> um, right, social media. Yeah, and I actually have a special offer for the listeners, if you want me to announce it, Jamie. Yes, we have about <laughs> I two figured, minutes. Yeah, I wanted to do something. So um, I guess it's like typically a little bit of a slow time in December, like the next couple of weeks in the matchmaking world. <laughs> Um, and the dating coaching world, like as much as people really want love and they want to find someone before January 1st or, you know, in the new year, they're also traveling. They're also spending time with family. It's like holidays. It's, you know, people tend to, to put off something important as love life. They just think like, oh, I'll start in January, kind of like a gym membership. So um, I figured I'd give it a little bit of incentive. Um, so this is an offer for anyone that's listening to this. Um, I do an introductory session. It could be done via FaceTime or Skype or anything like that, or in person if you're in the New York City area. And it's normally priced at $250, but I'm willing to do it for half price for anyone who is interested in exploring coaching or matchmaking. Um, the offer will be valid until January 1st. So this is just my uh, invitation to not put off <laughs> what you can do now so that you can take action to manifest the love that you want. Um, so if anyone is interested in that, they can just go to my website. They can fill out the form or they can email me at rachel at rachelrusso.com and I will honor that half price discounted consultation. Fantastic. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And I will see thank you. everybody next week on Love Talk Live. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Jamie. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.